Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. A powerful alien promises to destroy Earth and the only ones capable of stopping this massacre are class with the worst students of the school. Today we'll recap the story of the 2015 live-action, Assassination Classroom. A new threat arrives on the planet and the army prepares to neutralize it. They invade the creature's hideout, and gradually, the soldiers approach their target. However, when they finally manage to reach it, several tentacles appear to attack them. The men despair and start shooting, but end up being eliminated one by one. A few weeks later, that same monster that attacked the soldiers was teaching a high school class. As the teacher who most resembled the result of a cross between an octopus and Pac-Man took attendance of the class, his students used rubber bullets to try to destroy him. But how did a bunch of teenagers end up in this story? Well, it all started when they entered their final year in school. They belonged to class 3E, which was made up of the lowest performing students in the entire Kunigagoka school. Class A, on the other hand, is the elite that, according to the principal, has a bright future ahead of them. As punishment for low grades, the entire class E was sent to an abandoned building. The principal's excuse for making this decision is that, in this way, they could not interfere in the development of the other students. When they arrive in the classroom, they get a big surprise. The students discover that their new teacher is none other than an alien who destroyed part of the moon and intended to do the same to Earth by graduation. Tadaomi Karasuma, a member of Japan's Ministry of Defense, informs the students that their mission is to eliminate the professor before graduation, otherwise the entire planet would be destroyed. However, there was a problem, that creature was extremely fast and not even a professional agent was able to land a single hit. The yellow monster informs the class that he has made a deal with the government in which he claims he doesn't mind being killed as long as he can be class E's teacher. Tadaomi then introduces the bullets and knives developed by the Ministry of Defense. These weapons were made of a special material that was harmless to humans, but had a lethal effect against that monster. To demonstrate that he was telling the truth, the professor takes the gun from the man's hand and shoots himself in the tentacle. The students are scared to witness that scene, but in a few seconds the creature regenerates and a new limb is born in the place of the one that had been ripped off. The agent reveals that no one knows why the alien made that deal with the government, but states that the students are safe, as their teacher had promised he would never hurt them. Finally, the man says that the reward that will be given to the person who successfully eliminates that monster and saves the earth will be 10 billion yen, equivalent to 77 million dollars. Since then, Tadaomi became the assistant teacher to be able to train the students. In addition to him, another teacher was hired to teach English to them. Her name is Irina Yelovich, a highly skilled agent who was sent to kill that powerful being that threatened the planet. However, even with the help of a minigun, the woman did not even come close to succeeding in her operation. During class breaks, Tadaomi would train the students and, little by little, their combat skills were improving. Nagisa, one of the members of that class, studied all his teacher's weaknesses from the moment he got into that class. He even discovered that his face could change color depending on his mood. That day, three of his colleagues were trying to convince him to participate in a plan that, according to them, would be foolproof. The boy believed that it was not yet the right time to make a move, but he ended up giving in to the pressure of his classmates. As the class progresses, Nagisa informs the teacher that he has finished his activity and gets up to take the task to him. He walks with a knife hidden in his hands, but when he tries to strike the giant octopus, his attack is neutralized. Nagisa then hugs the teacher and seconds later a bomb explodes. Some students celebrate believing they have finally put an end to that freak. Kayano and the other colleagues try to help the boy and ask what that trio had done. They reveal that they made a grenade filled with the special rubber bullets. The plan was to kill the professor with those bullets, while Nagisa would leave with only minor injuries. When looking to the other side, the students notice a membrane that covered the monster's entire body. They search for the body, but soon discover that the big yellow head had not suffered even a scratch and was actually hiding on the ceiling of the room listening to the entire conversation. He is revealed to be able to change his skin once a month. That skin was extremely tough and took the full impact of the blast, so he managed to get out unharmed. However, the monster was extremely angry with the trio who had hatched that plan, for putting Nagisa's life at risk. As he was filled with hatred, his face turns red and, in a few seconds, he goes to the house of the parents of each of those three students and steals their nameplates. The professor claims that, due to the deal he made with the government, he couldn't hurt them, but if they put the lives of other colleagues at risk again, their family members would suffer the consequences. After making the threat and lecturing the students, he asks everyone to return to their seats and continues the class. Kayano asks the professor if he has a name, but the alien says he doesn't. So, she suggests that the students affectionately call him Koro-sensei. Everyone likes the idea, especially the professor himself, and from now on that becomes his name. Later that same day, 
When Tadaomi arrives at school, he finds the students gathered around the basketball hoop and Koro-sensei was trapped in it. Irina arrives soon after and they both ask the students what's going on. The students report that they planted that trap the day before and managed to arrest the teacher. While spinning from side to side, the net comes loose and Koro-sensei is knocked down. The students take the opportunity to shoot him, however, the crazy octopus is faster and, in the blink of an eye, appears on the roof of the school. At that moment, a new member arrives at the school. His name is Akabane Karma and he had been suspended from class A due to his violent behavior. The boy glues a few pieces of anti-teacher material to his right hand and tests its effectiveness in greeting his new sensei. When he arrives at the classroom the next day, Koro-sensei is surprised to find an octopus stabbed on his desk. Karma apologizes for what happened and claims that he killed the animal thinking it was his teacher. At that time, the alien approaches the boy and says that he will show him the power of those tentacles. First, he uses the octopus as an ingredient to make takoyaki and stuffs the dumpling in the boy's mouth and even takes the opportunity to glue fake nails on him. Later, on the way home, Nagisa meets his new classmate quite reflective. The young man remembers an episode that happened while he still belonged to class A after a fight he had with boys from another school, his principal approaches and states that even if karma gets into fights easily, he will always be by his side. Noticing that Nagisa is nearby, he says that despite being a bit strange, Koro-sensei is a good teacher, but still, they have orders to kill him. Just then, the professor appears and advises them to keep improving their combat skills. Karma then asks if the professor is willing to risk his life to protect one of his students. The monster says yes, and the boy makes a drastic decision. The boy pulls out his gun and jumps off the cliff. His plan is to shoot Koro-sensei the moment he tries to save him. While free-falling, Karma recalls the day he beat up three class of bullies who were humiliating a class E boy. When he learned of what had happened, the principal disapproved of him for assaulting elite students and, as punishment, he was sent to class E. Meanwhile, Koro-sensei uses his tentacles to build a web and stop the boy from falling. In this way, he was able to save his student, without running the risk of being killed. The boy is taken back to the surface and, frustrated, he leaves. At the Ministry of Defense, the president says that in the last two months, since that thing arrived on the planet, Japan was getting attacked with missiles from several countries. But, they ended up being saved by the alien octopus. The president even says that he intended to leave Tadaomi in charge of dealing with this situation, but as there has been no progress yet, he decided to send a new student to put an end to that monster. The next day, during class, we found out that this new student was actually a robot equipped with artificial intelligence. His goal was to destroy the alien teacher, but under no circumstances it could harm a student. For its first attack, the crazy robot uses its machine guns to try to eliminate Koro-sensei. As expected, its blows have no effect, but that machine has the excellent ability to learn and evolve. During the classes, the machine continued to apply its attacks and caused great dissatisfaction among the other students, who could barely pay attention to what was being taught and, in the end, still needed to clean up all the mess left by the robot. But on the other hand, the machine was managing to advance its mission. Due to its high learning ability, it now had a 0.001% chance of knocking out the teacher on the next hit. If it continued to evolve like this, until graduation, that number would increase to 90%. However, this percentage doesn't mean anything to the students, their only concern is that they stop being bothered during classes. So, as a way to prevent the robot from continuing to shoot, they chain it, preventing the machine from using its weapons. After class, Koro-sensei approaches his newest student and shows a stack of papers with the data of all his students. In this way, the robot could study its colleagues in order to know the best way to deal with them and have a good relationship. The next morning, when they arrive at school, students receive a notification on their phones. When they open the message, the artificial intelligence informs them that it has decided to make an app of itself to facilitate interaction with its colleagues. It further informs that it will no longer try to eliminate the teacher alone and will strive to learn to work as a team. Kayano again suggests a name for the new classmate and everyone agrees to call it Ritsu. The robot informs that a new student has transferred and is about to arrive at the school. A few seconds after Koro-sensei enters the room, a white-haired boy falls from the ceiling. Then a man in beekeeper overalls enters the room and asks the boy to use the door next time. He introduces himself as Shiro, the boy's guardian, and apologizes for what happened. Ritsu informs its classmates that this is Hirobe Itana and that they trained together at the special agent school. The boy claims to be stronger than everyone there and challenges Koro-sensei to a battle. The professor accepts the duel and Shiro establishes a single rule that said that the first to leave the space delimited by the desks would lose. As soon as the battle begins, in his first attack, Itana is able to rip off one of the professor's tentacles. 
the boy surprises everyone by revealing tentacles coming out of his head. Koro sensei notices that the boy's tentacles are still developing and a memory of his past makes the teacher angry. The professor dodges all of the boy's blows and sheds his skin to get rid of the attacks. This is the second time in the same month that he has used his secret defense. As he clings to the ceiling, his tentacles regenerate and Professor Octopus has his energy running low. Because of that, he can't dodge the next attacks and takes a beating from that boy. After recovering from the blows, he confesses that this is the first time he has encountered an opponent at his level, however, he does not give up easily. Koro Sensei uses the rubber knife developed by the Ministry of Defense to weaken his enemy, as his tentacles were made of the same material as the octopus's body. As the boy had his tentacles herded, his speed also decreases and the teacher takes the opportunity to launch Itana out of the classroom. Although he was not injured, as he was protected by the professor's skin, the boy was out of the ring, therefore, he lost the fight. Shiro then takes his disciple and leaves, with a promise that they would be back soon. At the end of class, Nagisa and Kayano approach the teacher to ask why he chose to become class E's teacher. At that moment, Koro Sensei reveals that he did it to fulfill the promise he made to someone, however, he still couldn't reveal who that person is or the promise he made. Next, Nagisa asks if there is anything they can do now to be able to eliminate the alien professor someday. Faced with this question, Koro Sensei suggests that students spend the weekend at school to study. As he himself would also stay at the school, this would be one more chance for the students to be able to eliminate him. The class accepts the idea and the teacher names that weekend activity the assassination training camp. Koro Sensei uses his super speed to teach each student separately with specific lessons to help them with the subjects they had the most difficulty with. That night, Tadaomi receives a call from his superior, who informs him of the arrival of a new coach the next morning. Soon after, Koro Sensei arrives at Tadaomi's room and, when asked about his love life, he becomes reflective and recalls the moment he lost his beloved. As agreed, the next morning, Takaoka Akira arrives at the school and announces that he will become Class E's new coach. But, before starting training, he takes breakfast to the students, who immediately like their new sensei. Later, Irina goes to talk to Tadaomi about her former army buddy Takaoka and explains that his teaching method is to get closer to his students and make them believe that they are like family. The problem with this is that shortly after, he begins his dictatorship, even using violence against the students. The second day of training begins and Takaoka asks the students to run 20 laps. Kanzaki starts to feel sick and falls, so the trainer asks if the girl is okay. She says she can't take it anymore and prefers to train with Mr. Tadaomi. At that moment, the man stands up and slaps the girl. All the students gather and ask the teacher to release their classmate, but the man is determined to teach her a lesson. However, before he could land the second blow, Tadaomi appears and grabs his fist. He orders that psychopath to leave his students alone. Takaoka claims that Tadaomi's training methods are not effective, which is why those teenagers were so weak. He asks the man to choose his best student to fight with him and promises that if the chosen student were able to put the knife to his body even once, he would admit defeat and leave that school. Tadaomi then chooses Nagisa, but states that the boy doesn't have to participate in this if he doesn't want to. However, what most students didn't even suspect is that Nagisa has a natural talent for killing. The boy manages to hide this ability very well behind his easygoing personality, but inside he has a thirst for blood. When he's facing Takaoka, the boy can't hide his joy at having to attack him. He smiles and walks towards the man who was completely confident, but when he looks at the boy's face, he is totally speechless. In that instant, Nagisa puts the knife into the coach's neck and knocks him down. The man gets extremely angry and demands a rematch, he couldn't accept losing to a brat like that. But Nagisa reminds him of the deal. He thanks Takaoka for his teachings, but asks the man to accept his defeat and leave. Humiliated, he decides to leave and all the students thank Nagisa for getting rid of that crazy psychopath. It's a rainy day and classes continue as usual. Koro Sensei is late, and when he arrives in the room, everyone notices that there is something wrong with his face. The octopus had a completely bloated head because it had absorbed a lot of water. Science class was about to start and Okuda asks her teacher to drink the poison she used all her skills to prepare. Everyone mocks the girl for her naivety, but Koro Sensei decides to drink that weird liquid. As he does so, his face turns pale and suddenly, horns begin to grow on his head. Finally, his entire body turns white, as if frozen. But, he quickly returns to normal and praises Okuda for having made such a powerful poison based on sodium hydroxide, a substance fatal to humans but harmless to him. Finally, he says that he will be happy to teach her how to make an even stronger poison, and upon ingesting it, his body becomes thin as a blade and Koro-sensei uses this new form to run away while his students try to catch him. 
A few minutes later he returns to normal and asks the students to call Professor Tadaomi and Professor Irina and gather in the schoolyard. Koro-sensei tells the students that a good agent always has a plan B to apply to the mission in case his plan A fails. Suddenly, the teacher takes off like a rocket and soon returns to school, destroying everything around him. He had just held a bomb in midair. The alien then leads the students back to the classroom and informs them that for the next exams they will have to gather their knowledge and structure a perfect plan to eliminate him. To help them with this quest, he says he will allow the students who get the highest scores in each subject to destroy one of his tentacles. With each lost tentacle, his speed is decreased and the possibility of students being able to successfully eliminate him, increases. In this way, Koro-sensei provided an excellent incentive for his students to dedicate themselves even more to their studies. At the end of the class, as the students returned to their homes, the teacher decided to give Nakamura, his best English student, a hands-on experience of the language. So, Koro-sensei takes her to the United States, where she could have direct contact with English. Then it takes Karma, the top math student, to calculate the height of the Great Wall of China. And Kayano went to Italy to find out the leaning angle of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. In this way, all students were able to live an academic experience outside Japan and Koro-sensei was able to complete his graduation photo album. After the exam, Nakamura, Okuda and Karma were the ones who got the highest grades in English, science and math respectively. Therefore, each of the three could destroy one of their teacher's tentacles on the day of the final exam. The next day, the students prepared to execute the plan to eliminate Koro-sensei. They build all the structure necessary to succeed in their mission. That night, while watching the fireworks, the students reflect on whether they really need to kill Koro-sensei. Despite everything, they liked their teacher, but needed to eliminate him to save the planet. Suddenly, Koro-sensei appears and claims to be looking forward to seeing their performance the next day. Finally, the big day arrives and the students prepare to start the operation. After picking up their weapons, they head to the place of execution. Koro-sensei is tied up and the rest of the trap is revealed. The gang didn't miss a single detail and they were all eager to get their reward. Nagisa reveals that after cutting off his tentacles, Koro-sensei will be thrown into a bathtub full of water. On the rainy day, the boy realized that water is one of the alien octopus weaknesses. The students prepare to shoot and tear off the teacher's tentacles. Then gallons of water are thrown towards you. Finally, two students approach and shoot rubber bullets right in the monster's face. When Koro-sensei was about to be hit, an explosion happens and the octopus disappears. Shortly after, the students manage to find him, but his entire body is gone. What remained was only his head, which was wrapped in a high-density crystallized pellicle capable of protecting him from any external factors, not even the special bullets were able to affect him. That was Koro-sensei's absolute defense, which could not be broken even by a nuclear bomb. However, that energy crystal would not last longer than 24 hours. So the students come up with the idea of filling a pool with the anti-teacher bullets and putting him inside. When the pellicle broke, the octopus would be destroyed upon contact with the bullets. But Koro-sensei claims that if that happens, he can explode again and expel all the bullets before being affected by them. Suddenly, without any explanation, some students begin to faint and Kayano realizes that they have a very high fever. Minutes later, Takaoka and his gang show up and the man informs them that before leaving he put a virus in some students' drinks. He even says that once the virus is inside their body, they will die within three days unless they take the antidote. In this case, obviously, he was the only one who had the antidotes against that virus. Takaoka reveals that he is there seeking revenge because, because of Nagisa, he has become a laughing stock at the Ministry of Defense. Just thinking about the boy makes him barely sleep at night. Takaoka states that he will only hand over the antidote if the boy hands it over to the teacher. However, Nagisa doesn't want to do that. To make things worse, Itana appears and attacks the boy. Tadaomi tries to save him and ends up being injured. The boy is there to get his rematch against Koro-sensei. Karma then pulls Nagisa and they both run away to try to stop their teacher from being taken. Itana goes after him and Takaoka escapes with his men, taking the antidotes. While the other students try to help their sick classmates, Karma and Nagisa climb a tower in an attempt to hide from the boy. However, the boy finds them and uses his tentacles to destroy the ladder they were climbing up. Nagisa then throws the sphere to his friend, who is soon caught by the boy. Karma tries to dodge the attacks and almost falls off the tower. Itana manages to catch him with his tentacles, but the boy uses the sphere to attack the boy. Karma keeps trying to run away until he ends up getting knocked down. At that moment, Nagisa manages to cling to the tower, before the ladder is completely destroyed. The red-haired boy surrenders and says he will hand the teacher over to the boy. However, he launches the sphere at his friend instead, and Itana soon releases his tentacles to attack him. But what he didn't expect is that, 
At that moment, it starts to rain and with his body wet, the boy loses his powers. Koro-sensei praises the students for their plan. The boys knew it was going to rain at that time, so they chose that day to eliminate their teacher. That was plan B. The octopus states that if Itana is still interested, he will be very welcome to join the E-class. Just then, the boys receive a message from Ritsu, who informs them about what is happening at the school. Nagisa appears with a bag in his hands and Takaoka as they're waiting for him. The man informs him that his plan to eliminate the professor is underway. He intends to bury him in a cement tub filled with special bullets, along with Kayano. That way, the teacher couldn't explode to get rid of the bullets because if he did, he would end up killing a student. Takaoka orders Nagisa to hand over the monster, but the boy begs the man to allow the Class E students to eliminate the teacher with their own hands, as that is what they were trained for. However, Takaoka is not moved by the boy's request. Instead, he takes advantage of the fact that he's bent down and stomps on his head. While suffering all this humiliation, Nagisa hears a message from Ritsu arriving on his phone and smiles. The boy hands Koro-sensei to Takaoka, but when he removes the bag, the man realizes that it was actually just a soccer ball. At that moment, the rest of the students approach and trap those men in the concrete that they built themselves. Koro-sensei congratulates Okuda for being able to make the antidote for her classmates and Nagisa for his good performance, even when he was being humiliated. Minutes later, military helicopters approach and take all the students and teachers to their base. They plan to execute a strategy to destroy Koro-sensei while he is still inside the sphere, so that the alien cannot move. The Ministry of Defense prepares a shelter where the monster would not be able to get out, even if it exploded, and they intend to fill the place with anti-teacher balls. But first, they allow the octopus to say his last words to his students. With great attention, they all stare at the screen as they listen to their teacher's latest speech. The creature congratulates the students on their performance and growth along this journey. He says that there is no greater happiness than seeing them grow and ends by thanking them for the opportunity to be their teacher. Quickly, the entire sphere is covered by the special bullets and the countdown to the explosion begins. When this finally happens, the shelter remains intact and everyone believes the alien has been destroyed. The students burst into tears as they did not want to accept the death of their teacher. As Nagisa is in tears, yellow tentacles emerge from behind him and hand him a tissue. The boy looks back and is startled to find Koro-sensei. The other soldiers flee in despair, but Tadaomi is happy to see that his co-worker is still alive. Relieved, the students return to their school routine, which included the morning shots at the big yellow octopus head. And do you guys think Class 3E will be able to eliminate Koro-sensei by graduation or will the alien professor succeed in destroying Earth? So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.